for matrix operations. And just so you know, we've already done the really hard matrix operations. Okay, um, what we're going to start with is just add addition and subtraction. Usually we call a matrix with a capital letter. This is the name of the matrix. And it's just kind of like when we used to do like the name of a function and we would do f of x. So the name of the function is f. So the name of the matrix is a capital letter. Okay, so when we do that, it is made up of a bunch of little entries. So the little entries each kind of have their own letter. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this is the rows by the columns. So if I had to make a big ginormous list, this first entry, so since this is named big A, all the other ones are little a's, so little a's represent the entries. And they all have an entry, and this is in row 1, column 1. This is not A11, this is A11. And then since it's still in the first row, but it's in the second column, this is A12. This is A13. This goes on forever until I get A to the 1 to however many letters we have. Okay, what um, they call this N in the book, it doesn't really... It does kind of matter because we usually say it's M times N, which is rows by columns. So if I ask about the how many M's does it have, I'm asking you about the rows. If I ask how many N's, it's about the columns. So then in the second row, this first entry would be a 2, 1. Okay, it's in the second row, first column. Then I would have A22. Two, two. On this diagonal, I'll have A33. Three, three. This will be A23. Dot 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 A2N. That's not a 2N. There we go. So just this keeps going on a pattern. I could have A31, A32, A33, dot 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 A3N. And then down here, what I call this bottom one is a M1. It doesn't really matter, it's just so you can kind of see the pattern. Um, the dot 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 represents that this could be however big it needed to be. Okay, I'd have a M2, a M3, a lot of another dot 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 dot. And this last one over here would be a, I have M rows. And then I have N columns. They both look like N's because I'm terrible at writing. Okay, so that's just how the entries are named. And the reason we kind of name them like this is so that we can do, um, give you like an algorithm for multiplication when we get there. Um, multiplicate or addition and subtraction are really nice and simple. So if I had A plus B, and what they're going to do is kind of, actually say a equals I'll just use the example they have I have five zero four one I'll almost use the example they have I don't want to work with halves and then I have b equals six negative three two and three okay and then if I ask you to do a plus b it's really simple and I multiply or I add just whatever is in the top left. So the top left and the top left. I have negative five and six gives me positive one. Then I add the top rights together. I add each one. They have to be, have the same number of rows and columns. Okay, and then I have zero and a negative three gives me negative three. Four and two gives me six. One and three gives me four. That would be what a plus b equals. Um, so addition is really nice. Um, an example of subtraction real fast. Just means that we're going to subtract everything over here. And then you have to pay attention to what your signs were to begin with. So in the first row, first column, so the top left, I have negative 5 minus 6 gives me negative 11. 
I have 0 minus negative 3. That will be a positive 3. Okay, if you need to write it out, you can also go through and write out some of the steps longer if you feel the need to. I have 4 minus 2 would give me 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So what I mean by writing it out more, I could have negative 5 minus 6. 0 minus negative 3. 4 minus 2. 1 minus 3. If you're kind of getting the wrong number, that's what I would suggest doing is just going through and doing. So if we notice the rows by the columns, these were both 2 by 2. 2 by 2. Okay, I think it's really nice actually to go through and label the rows and the columns of everything first. Um, so a lot of times you might see just A is a 2 by 2 matrix. And, that, and it might tell you what it equals, it might not. Okay, but then what I'm also going to give you, so I'm going to label these both as 2 by 2s, 2 by 2s. Okay, um, and that's usually where you would label them, is just kind of as a subscript for your capital letter. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you another matrix. So I'm going to have matrix C equals 1, 2, 3. I'm just doing something simple. And if I do the rows, I can see that there's three rows and one column. So these right here, if I asked you to add A plus C, since A is a 2 by 2, 2 by 2, and C is a 3 by 1, it is not possible. The rows and columns have to be the same. Rows and columns. have to be the same. To add or subtract. Okay, and the next really nice property that we have with matrices is called scalar multiplication. And there's two types of multiplication, so make sure you actually write scalar multiplication. Um, what I will usually say if we're doing scalar multiplication is just scalar multiplication. Okay. Um, so what that means is that we could have a small letter times a matrix. The small letter represents just a plain old number. The capital letter represents a matrix. When you, we see something like this, so it could be, um, we usually represent it with K, it could be L's. If we run out of letters, it could be other stuff. Okay, that's not a big deal. So what that means, if I gave you A, I will just use the same one that we did in the last one. So I did A equals negative 5, 0, 4, 1. And then I'm also going to go ahead and give you just a random B. And I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negative 6, just to throw in something else. Okay, and then I might tell you maybe k is 5, and they might tell you find ka. Okay, so ka, that would just look like what how I'm going to actually write it, is I'm going to write 5 in front of the matrix, so negative 5, 0, 4, 1. And then I rewrite the matrix as negative 25, 0 times 5 is 0, 4 times 5 is 20, and 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, that's all scalar multiplication is. If I gave you L is equal to negative 3, and I ask you to find KLB, Okay, I could actually write this a couple different ways. I could just write it out like that. I could write K L B or I could write K parentheses L B. Okay, and this is one of the properties of multiplication that is called the associate property. Associative associative 
property of scalar multiplication. We've already had um, the associative property of multiplication like a long time ago. Um, but um, now we need to just like, kind of denote it as scalar multiplication because we have weird things that happen with matrices. Okay, um, I could multiply in, in any order. That does not matter. So associative proper means associative property means any order. Okay, so if I asked you to find that, um, so K L B, I could do K times L first. So what I could do, I could do negative fifteen times matrix B. So one, two, three, four. That's a four, five, negative six. I could do a couple different ways. I could do five after I take three times the matrix. One, two, three, four, five, negative six. Okay. Um, associative property does mean that, um, I'm sorry that I said any order. The K has to still come before the L. So I could I could do it either of these two ways is basically all that it means. Okay, this is basically this way, and this is this way. Either way, I'm going to get the same answer. So if I were to do it this top way, I could have negative 15, negative 30, negative 45, negative 60, negative 75, or positive 90, and I don't have to write the plus sign. Okay, if I did it this way, I would get all the same answers, but what I'm going to take is two separate steps to get there. So I would have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, negative 18, and then I would have to multiply, and then I'm just going to get that same thing. Okay, so that's all the associative property means is that for scalar multiplication is that I can multiply them the numbers first and then multiply it through whatever you need to do okay the other properties that exist um, I would go ahead and write down your associative property um, just with it I'm not going to relist it again but you should um, so I have properties of matrix stuff I'm just going to write matrices um, so properties of matrices, um, and these are just going to be addition and scalar multiplication. And so one of them is that I can add them in any order, add or subtract, or not subtract, I'm sorry. Um, so I can do B plus A. That one is a commutative property of addition. Whoops, there's no I in there. Okay, your next one is the associative property of addition, which means that if I basically had three matrices, remember that our order of operations tells us to do stuff in parentheses first. So that means that I could do, add B plus C, or I could add A plus B first. It doesn't matter as long as they stay, whoops, that's a C, as long as it's still like ABC, ABC, as long as they're still in the same order that way. So that's associative property of addition. I'm just going to write associative prop of addition, of add is what I'm going to actually write. Okay, so um, what we usually do is just kind of add all three of them at the same time. That's okay too. Um, however, we do have to be really careful with matrices um, to actually keep things in the same order that we actually write them as. Okay, um, we've already listed the associative property of scalar multiplication, and these are on page 515 if you need to look at them again. Page 515. Um, so I have that, and then I also have my distributive property. So I could have a scalar times two matrices, that would be the same as taking k times each matrices separately. I can add them in any order. I can multiply or add however I need to. That's just your distributed property.
Okay, but you also have to think about the distributive property as I could also have two scalars. So I could have K plus L times matrix A. That would just look like KA plus LA. Okay, that's also a distributive property. So there's a couple different examples of that. And then we have what we call the additive identity. Additive identity. Okay, and what that means is I can take some matrix and I can add to that what we call the zero matrix. And I can add that in either direction and I will always get the same matrix A out. Along with the additive identity, we also have the additive inverse. Inverse. And what that means is I can have some matrix and I can add to that what we call the additive inverse, which is usually just the negative one and that I can add it in any order. Okay, um, so you don't necessarily have to put these around it, um, the parentheses around it. All that it represents is that it's the negative one of this. And when I add those together, I will get zero. So identity is adding zero. So adding zero, inverse is getting zero. So kind of try to keep those straight. Okay, if you wanted to do this in your calculator, I still have a matrix typed in there from yesterday. Um, I can go see, and it doesn't have any dimensions on these, so I can go over and I know that since these guys don't have any dimensions, I've never entered one before. So I'm going to go ahead and in edit a matrix B, and I need to make it the same size as matrix A so that I can add them and see what happens. Okay, so I just, I'm going to do one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I don't even remember what I had for matrix A, but as soon as I'm done entering them, and I actually don't think I actually entered 12 into that last one because I didn't push enter. So now I can just go to matrix and I need to do under the names and hit enter. And I can have a, I don't need that yet, plus second matrix. I have to go down and pick B or I can just hit the number two. And I can see what that matrix gives me, 317, blah, 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 blah. And I can also check to make sure that I'm going to get the same thing both ways to show the commutative property of addition. Okay, that I can add in both directions. Okay, I should get the same thing in both places, so that's good. Um, so that's how you would add things in your matrix. Um, you'll probably have to do a lot of editing. I kind of want to see it by hand, um, but you definitely can check yourself in the calculator. Okay, so that was the nice easy stuff. Now we get to matrix multiplication. And you think, hey, we've been doing multiplication on matrices the whole time. But we haven't been. Multiplication. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have basically, it will usually be written like as A times B or whatever letters you have. Um, so your main rules. So you'll generally be given what matrix A and B is. I'm just going to use, for example, I'm going to say that A is A, B, C, D, E, F. And this is a 2 by 3 matrix. B, I'm going to call G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay, and that's because I just I want to see the pattern that's happening more than anything. And this is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix. So what you have to do first of all is make sure that the row of the first is the same. I'm sorry, I'm making it confusing. The 
column of the first is the same as the row of the second. So what I always do is I set up, I have A is a 2 by 3 times, I use a dot for times, B is a 3 by 2. So what I usually do is I circle these middle ones, so these two have to be the same, and my new one will be AB, and this will be a 2 by 2. It will be whatever you have left over on these outsides, so just because I actually have 2 here and 2 here is why this one is a 2 by 2. So I usually kind of cross these guys out in the middle, and then I circle these little guys, rows and columns. Okay, so let's just go ahead and multiply A times B. And of course we can do this in the calculator, that's a good check. We still need to see everything out. Okay, because now that I know the dimensions, so this is really why I like doing this, is so that I know my dimensions first. I make a 2 by 2, so I'm going to have two entries here. And I do really like underlining them actually. And then I have two on the bottom as well. So what this represents is just kind of giving myself enough room. I'm going to take the rows here, and then I'm going to multiply them with this. So I'm just going to write out this pattern first of all. So I have A times G. That was the first entry in the first row and the first entry in the first row, this one I meant to say column, and I do that all the time, and I'm really, really sorry about that. And then I'm going to add to that B times I. Those were the second in this row and this column. And then I'm going to add to that C, K. And that's the first entry. That will be a single number, so I'm just going to do it with letters first, and then I will do it with an actual real example. Okay, so I have, then I'm taking this first row and this second column. I'm going to take A times H. A times H. I'm going to add to that B times J. And then I'm going to add to that C times L. Okay, so those were the third ones. I'm going to pick another color. And then I'm moving into my second row. When I move to my second row, then I move to my second row on my first one. So I will have D, E, F, and G, I, K. So I have D times G plus E times I plus F times K. I'm just trying to spell a lot of bad words is all that I'm trying to do. Then I'm going to have my second row and my right column. I will have D times H plus E times J plus F times L. What I really like about writing it out is you can see where things repeat and you can see some more patterns when you actually write them out like that and it keep, makes it easier to keep track by just writing out this first one even when you have real numbers. So the G's stay in the same place, the I's, the K's, and then as soon as I move columns I have HJLs. But along this first, this top row I have ABC, ABC. D-E-I, D-E-F, sorry, I can't read my own writing. That's awful for you guys. Okay, what I'm also going to do is give you just kind of this like lettery example of B times A. So I'm going to get my new color out again. I'm going to get black out. B-A, you might think, hey, these should be the same thing because that's what we've always had is multiplication um, that can go either direction, but matrix multiplication is not that way. So B 
what I'm going to do is write out my um, order, my rows and my columns. B is a 3 by 2. A, so times a 2 by 3. And there's some times that we cannot multiply things. So I have to check to make sure those middle two numbers are the same. Good, they are. So my new one is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So what that means is I'm going to make 1, 2, 3. I'm going to make it down below because I'm awful at making enough room for myself. So I have a 1, 2, 3. And then I need also 3 rows. So those are my 3 columns, my 3 rows. So this is, I know how big my matrix is. And I just don't have enough colors here, so I can't color code them as nicely. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is rewrite them in the correct order. So I have G, H, I, J, K, L, J, K. And then I have A, which is A, B, C, D, E, F. I'll try to kind of color code them. I'm going to take my rows by my columns. So I have GA times H, or plus, I'm sorry, 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 plus HD. So G times A plus H times D. Then I will do this next, the same row, because I'm still in the top row. I'm going to work on this one. So I'm in the top row. And if I just like kind of name this entry, I am in row 1, column 2. So I have row 1, column 2. I would have GB plus HE. In my first row and my third column, this is my first row and my third column. Okay, so I will have GC plus HF. Okay, I'm, just, I'm not going to try to color code the rest of them, but I'm now in the second row, first column. This is my second row, my first column. So I'll have IJ. Oh, I'm awful. No, we don't have that. I have IA is what I meant to say, and it just came out as a J. Sorry. So I have IA plus JD. Then I have IJ or IB plus JE. Okay, I can kind of start seeing the pattern that's going to happen. Then I have IC, ooh, I see, plus JF. What I kind of can do from this point on is I can just fill out this pattern that I kind of see going on. I can fill out these F's and the C's. I know there's going to be a plus sign. I have an E, a B, a plus sign. I know I have a couple things to multiply from. I have an A and a D. What's going to happen now is this KL is going to go times those things. So KL, KL, KL. It's a lot easier if you just get the patterning down. Okay, so what that's going to look like in actual real numbers is I'm going to give you A. I have 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 3. B equals, and you always do have an equal sign, and sometimes I get sloppy, and I'm sorry about that. I have 1, 6, 3, negative 5 negative 2, 4. So first I'm going to ask you to do A, B. So A times B. Okay, because this is a 2 by 3, or 2 by 3 and a 3 by 2, I know what I'm going to have is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix when I get done. So I have two rows, and then I have two columns. Okay, I, I mean, I really, really do fill out little lines every single time. So my A's, I can kind of follow this pattern, but sometimes you don't always have that same pattern. So you have to be able to make this pattern because not all of them will be the same size that you're given. Okay, so I will have 
A, I will have basically this row by this column. Okay, so this is the top left. This is the top left. Okay, so I have 3 times 1 plus 1 times 3 plus negative 1 times negative 2. Okay, in my next step, I will add those together. I'm not even going to try to add them together right now. And then I'm in my top row in my right-hand column. So I have 3 times 6 plus 1 times negative 5 plus negative 1 times 4. And then in, I'm in my bottom left. Um, if you guys want to make like little colors, that is helpful as well. Um, or erase your arrows every time you start on a new one so you can remember where you're at. I have 2 times 1 plus 0 times 3 plus 3 times negative 2. Every time I have a negative, I usually write it in parentheses, and that's just to keep um, it from looking like a minus sign, because it totally will start looking like a minus sign eventually. Um, and then I'm in my bottom right. So I have 2 times 6 plus 0 times negative 5 plus 3 times 4. And then in my next step, I will actually write out what those numbers are. So I have 3 times 1, that's 3. 1 times 3 is 3, and that is a positive 2. So I have 3 plus 3 plus 2, that's 8. Then I have 18 minus 5, that's an 18, and a minus 4. So I have... 18 and a negative 9, that's going to give me positive 9. And then I have a 2, 0, negative 6. That will give me negative 4 when I add those together. 2 times 6 is 12, 0, 12. When I add those together, I'll get 24. So that's what happens when I actually add them and multiply them. This is the actual multiplication. This is my final step. So then I would write AB equals, and the answer doesn't ever take up very much room, 8, 9, negative 4, 24. Okay, don't put fraction bars or anything. Make Just kind of separate them with a space, no commas, anything like that at all. Okay, I will go ahead and we'll also do B times A in class tomorrow. Um, so if you need help doing the A times B, we'll go ahead and do that. We also have some properties of matrix multiplication that you need to list off for yourself. So properties of matrix multiplication. And your associative property is... is that I could have A times B times C first, and that would be the same thing as taking A times B times C. Um, then I also have my distributive property. And that would be A times B plus C equals AB plus AC. Make sure you keep these in the same order. Okay, I also, your other list of the distributive property, if I had B plus C in parentheses first with A on the right-hand side, this would be the same as BA plus CA. And these two things are not equal to each other. Okay? So these two are not equal. Um, so we actually, I do need to show you guys that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do B times A for you here. 
Okay, so I will go ahead and do that. Sorry that I keep changing my mind. I just kind of want to keep this one close so we can see it. What I'm going to do is list them in the order that I want to multiply them in. So I have BA is what I want to find. Okay, so this is going to be um, 1, 6, 3, negative 5, negative 2, 4. That's B. Matrix A is 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 3. Okay, so this is a 3 by 2 matrix. And this guy over here is a 2 by 3 matrix. Okay, so these are the same, so that's good. My new matrix is going to be... So I'm kind of trying to keep things small and separate. And you should just take up lots of paper. What I'm going to get out of this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do. Okay, so this 3 by 3 matrix, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first row by this first column. So that will be 1 times 3 plus 6 times 2. Then I'm going to take this first row by the second column because I'm in the first row second column here. So this will be 1 times 3 1 times 1, I'm sorry, 1 times 1 plus 6 times 2. I'm looking at the wrong one, 6 times 0. Okay, I need to uncircle things or circle them in a different color. Then I have 1 times 6 times negative 1 and 3. So that will be 1 and negative 1, so 1 times negative 1, so I'm putting that guy in parentheses, plus 6 times 3. Okay, and then I need to move to my second row, first column. So I'm going to have 3 times 3, plus, that's a negative 5, so he goes in parentheses, times 2. My next thing, I'm going to have this second row, second column. I'll have 3 times 1, plus negative 5 times 0. And then my second row, third column, I have 3 times negative 1 plus negative 5 times 3. Then I have in my third row and my first, second, and third column, each go in each place. And so I'll have negative 2 times 3 plus 4 times 2. Then I'll have negative 2 times 1 plus 4 times 0. And I do write them out just to see the pattern. Then I have negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4 times 3. Um, you could have pretty quickly seen that these are not going to give you the same matrix because they're not the same size. Um, but no, there's very few matrix multiplications that will be the same on both sides. Um, so what I'm going to go through is multiply things out. So I'll have 3 and 12, and that's a 1 and 0. That's a negative 1 and 18. So then I'm going to fill in those spots respectively. I have 3 plus 12 is 15, 1 plus 0 is 1, negative 1 and 18 is 17, and then I'll have a 9, a negative 10, which is going to give me a negative 1, 3, and a 0, that will give me a 3, a negative 3, that's a 3, and a negative 15 will give me a negative 18. A negative 6 and an 8, a negative 2 and a 0, a positive 2 and a 12. That will give me 2, negative 2, and 14. Okay, so these are not equal. So BA is not equal to AB. In very, very few cases is it.
And then you have a couple really nice um, questions that will give you something like 4x plus 2y minus z equals 3, 9x plus z equals 5, 4x plus 5y minus 2z equals 1. And what they're going to tell you is to make a matrix equation equivalent. Equivalent. Um, this is actually not very bad at all. All you basically do is list your coefficients of the x, y's, and z's. So I have 4, 2, negative 1, 9, 0, 1, 4, 5, negative 2. What I then do is list an x, y, z. When I multiply that out, if I were to multiply that out, I would get basically this thing. And that will be equal to 3, 5, 1. Okay, we already know kind of how to solve this. We'll go through a different method of how to solve that tomorrow. But today, homework on page 520, I want you to do numbers 1 through 45 odds.